Hi, I'm Hanum Khalter. I'm a professor of parasitology at Banhai University. I'm going to present a review about the green nanoparticles for tick control. Through the Second International Conference in Material Science and Engineering held at Banhai University, Egypt. This work is related to a project funded from IBAGRI about EcoSmart alternative control strategies against Thylaria ulada and its tick vectors. And I am the Egyptian PI of such a project. Ticks transmit more infectious agents than any other group of blood feeding arthropods affecting humans, livestock, pets, and wildlife. Here are some examples of hard tick species. The life cycle of ticks starts with an engorged female that lay eggs, which hatch into larvae. Larvae move into nymph. Nymph remold into adult male and female. Each developmental stage needs a blood meal. The ways of transmission of tick-borne diseases include Transstegial transmission between stages or transovarian transmission from engorged female to eggs. Here are some examples of tick borne diseases, which include babesiosis, Lyme, Ehrlichiosis, Bazoan encephalitis, Tularemia, Thylaria, Nephlasmosis. In fact, the overuse of bacaricides and tick repellents resulted in environmental contamination besides food residues in meat and milk. Development of resistance in ticks drives the price up and increases toxicity. For sure nature helps, we are looking for eco-friendly control strategies against ticks. Acaricidal and repellent plants are mainly found in two major plant families, Astraceae and Linaceae. And here are some examples of acaricidal plants. Actually, there are three major bioassays used for tick control. Here are some examples of oils and active compounds. Deed, the reference commercial repellent, but some plants are more effective than DEET. Despite their promising potential, there is no products based on botanicals because of pH, photoxidation, temperature, standardization, and microbial action. So, we are looking for smart solutions. Nano pesticides. They are nano-sized materials providing pesticidal properties, characterized by slow degradation, controlled release of the active ingredients for a long time, environmentally safe and less toxic when compared to chemical pesticides. And they could come up into different formulations. Essential oils are highly effective as pesticides and repellents, but they have short residual effect. Fortunately, they could be formulated into nano emulsions. This slide shows the steps of preparation of essential oil nano emulsion from aromatic plants to control ticks and tick borne diseases. Nano emulsions enhance the stability of the emulsion through separating the oil from the aqueous phase. They have good storage stability and finally improve the quality of the commercial products through adjuvants and surfactants. Nano encapsulation. An insecticide is slowly but efficiently released to a particular host for pest control. Allows proper absorption of the chemical. Actually, there are several release mechanisms of nano encapsulation like diffusion, dissolution, biodegradation, and osmotic pressure with a specific pH and temperature. Synthesis of nanoparticles based on botanicals is usually done within a few minutes. Green synthesis using metal nanoparticles is cheaper and single-step process. Does it require the use of high pressure, energy, temperature, 
or toxic chemicals. Metal nanoparticles could be fabricated through different reaction parameters into spherical, triangular, or hexagonal nanoparticles. Green synthesis using metal nanoparticles is characterized by chemical stability, electrical conductivity, catalytic, and antibacterial activities. Such a green chemistry is simple, characterized by low cost, less time consuming, less labor, eco friendly, and has no adverse effect. Before application, the biophysical characterization of green synthesized nanoparticles should be determined. Nanopesticides could be used for tick control as protectants or carriers to increase solubility, shelf life, site specific uptake. They also decrease the toxicity and soil leaching. These are some examples of metal and metal oxide nanoparticles used to control the catalytic Rebecifilus bophilus microbilis. And here are some more examples. This figure shows the abundance percent of in vitro and in vivo studies using plant products and nanoparticles to control the catalytic. The bad news is there is no application of nanopesticides in the field. There is no studies have been conducted on the mode of action at the basis of the acaricidal activity of nanoparticles. But there is only one study made by Benelli 2018 about the mode of action of nanoparticles against insects. Insects eventually die after the application of nanopesticides because of dehydration, developmental damages, or chronic toxicity with fitness reduction. Conclusion Several nanoformulations are more toxic to ticks than commercial acaricides, such as deltamethrin. Development of nanopesticides will provide many solutions to the agriculture industry, such as solubility, stability, control release formulations, and target delivery of the active compounds. Botanical nanopesticides could be used in an organic farming and against resistant strains. Ultimately, they would enhance the food security to growing populations. For sure, their ecotoxicological profile should be revealed before application. Future studies should include in vivo studies, the mode of action, a detailed chemical analysis of green extract used as a source of reducing an acapin agent. Finally, for better control of ticks and tick-borne diseases, collaboration of enomologist, parasitologist, bacteriologist, virologist, toxicologist, molecular biologist, nanoscientists, epidemiologist, and veterinarians are very crucial for the one health perspective. Thanks for your listening. Best wishes from Egypt and a happy new year.